We're gonna try out the lethal amp up mod. Shoutouts to Jay Animate stuff for making this mod. And we're gonna try to speed run the Iron Man challenge, because why not? I guess we can start a prediction early for the people who are here. Will Austin survive first quota? Alright, let's go. What does this mod do exactly? It tweaks some of like the vanilla uh, AI and spawns and stuff. It's supposed to make the game a bit harder than normal. Jay just put this out, I think yesterday even, or late last night. Even has a channel trailer up and everything. I watched the trailer and still didn't quite understand all the changes, but I think that's the point of the trailer, right? You don't want to tell, you don't want to tell everything. You want to kind of draw interest and let the players figure it out for themselves. Oh, well. Okay, well, this kill in solo, because I guess we'll find out, right? I'm trying to find my way out. This might kill in solo. No, okay. So we can leave. <laughs> I think we're good. I'm actually surprised Snare Fleet just doesn't kill, but I'm glad that Zekers is looking out for solo players like that. Lower tier monsters are mostly untouched. I hope I get to showcase enough of the mod then. If most of it's going to be endgame stuff, I have to actually make it to endgame in order for, um, for us to see a lot of the changes then. I have two hours to put on a performance using this mod before it's time to play with Nico. Probably two and a half hours to give Nico some time to like decompress or transition from going from work mode Nico to company work mode Nico. It's funny because I'm remembering now that when I first started playing Lethal Company with my friends, we would we would joke around a lot about how we would clock out to clock out of our jobs, clock out of work just to go back to work, and that wasn't a Lethal Company exclusive experience. We did that with Played Up also, especially me and my roommate Daniel, who are both chefs by profession. Uh, we would work 8 to 12 hour days in a kitchen only to clock out and then clock back into Played Up and play for another 4 to 8 hours. Said, like, you can only do this if you're really about that life, and we were really about that life. Try optimizing a challenge moon. So, <laughs> uh, hello. Speaking of Nico, <laughs> um,. You know, I when I was I was wait what I thought that was the second cash register. Imagine if this was the second cash register. During the crew ink stream this morning, Owen kept finding cash registers, and I jokingly said that when you speed run Lethal Company, you actually increase the spawn chance of cash registers, and especially when you stream on Twitch versus YouTube. But now I'm just starting to think that it's true. Now the problem with this is that I'm getting a bunch of two-handed items. And I'm at main injury. I don't know why I brought this out. Let's see if I can find some other single-handed. I don't know if I'm getting all of this, to be honest. But I will get this. You know, let's take this back and then play it by ear. Back to the thing about optimizing challenge moons. Uh, the last time Nico, Larry, and I tried to optimize a challenge moon is what made it <laughs> that it made us question how much we actually wanted to play Lethal Company. It was probably the beginning of our falling out, of our first fallout with the game, actually. Because we spent like literally six to eight hours on one challenge moon, and it was driving us freaking nuts. I might consider doing challenge runs as part of like the stream experience at least. I don't know if we'll out optimize them, just because I'd much rather like put up some scores on the Iron Man leaderboards and try completing the hardcore Iron Man challenge, the speedrunning version. But, uh, Challenge moons are something I haven't touched in a minute. Maybe it's something I'll touch at some point. How much how much more do I keep going? I'll get at least one more. I'm not too afraid of what the exterior has for me. I'm a little worried if uh, Jay changed anything about the thumper though. It's possible he changed things about the outdoor enemies too, so I gotta be careful actually. This one's worth one more, so this is worth my time. I gotta remember that I'm playing a modded version of this game, and I should I should treat it as such, because what if like the dogs, baboon hawks, or worms like acted differently? I did see that the worms and dogs were in his trailer. I didn't fully understand what was going on, but I should operate under the assumption that they're gonna be a little bit different. Yeah, see... Case in point. I wasn't even under that worm in it. <laughs> and it uh, jumped up. Not quite sure what the- oh, what the- Okay, hold on. Sorry, I, I pulled- I went to the wrong moon. Everyone just ignore what just happened right there. I almost landed back on assurance. 
kind of a time loss, but it's okay. I know that Jay mentioned something about changing Bracken AI, so this is probably a good moon to experience that. 25 whoopee cushion is pretty high. In his, uh, in Jay's stream, I saw that he had that there was weather multipliers. I don't know if that was part of his mod or if that was part of his friend's mod, but 25 is pretty high for a whoopee cushion. Bracken has back pain now. Kind of how I feel sometimes. Shoutouts to everyone who carries their friend group in Lethal Company. Okay, wait. What what's with this? Like, where where are these spawns when I do my regular Iron Man runs? Kind of having a chill time, getting free loot. And for the prime, dang, kids are crazy. Let's make sure we don't die. Now that people are putting their hard-earned Amazon Prime cash on the line. Whoa, wait, why did I hear that? Do you guys hear that? That was, was it, am I tripping? Was that not the spike trap noise? Although I did learn that the spike trap noise is an ambient sound, which is very troll. That's probably the most troll thing I've ever heard. But so far so good on this run. As long as nothing insanely bad happens, I should survive first quota with no problems. And actually a decent amount of loot as well. Somehow I can't see that strand of hair as an extension of your eyebrow just swaying in the air. <laughs> it actually is my eyebrow. Um, it's, it's such a long eyebrow that I kind of have it going from the side of my like from this side going wrapping all the way around the back of my head and back onto this side. It's kind of like a visual trick that I use. I do have a fan directly to my right, just kind of blowing hot air towards my face. Because if I didn't have that on, then I would be literally dying to heat. And um, I refuse to turn... Actually, that's not entirely true. I would absolutely be down to turn on the air conditioning. But the amount of money I'd have to pay to do that is not one I'm willing to pay at the moment. Luckily at my new place, I get like a really nice draft in my new, in my new, um, in my new room. So I don't even think I'll need an air conditioning at that point. Where am I going? Let's make sure I don't die here. Because I'm not... I'm not near the... Oh, God. Okay. Let me focus up for a second. I saw a ship scan this way, so we're gonna go this way. And I hear it now, too. Okay, we're somehow getting out of this just completely uns unscathed. I'm gonna pay out the believers. People who said that I would make it past first quota. Now we're gonna get a little bit more spicy. Will Austin survive second quota? Other than I watch your posted videos all the time, first time catching a stream, let's go. Appreciate you stopping by. The way to know right now if- oh god, I shouldn't have picked that up. To know if I'm gonna stream or not, is if I have a- whether or not I have a YouTube video up in the morning. Because if I upload a video to YouTube- right now, if I upload a video to YouTube, it means that I'm not gonna stream on Twitch. And if I don't have a YouTube video, then it means I will stream. But I'm gonna get a bit more calculated with that once I'm fully done moving get a actual stream schedule upload schedule up we're gonna get the regular flashlight out from uh from jay's request because he did change it and i do remember him showing me the difference as you can see the flashlight has no battery left but it's kind of like a shake light so you, can, <laughs> you can have an infinite flashlight if you're willing to shake it up there's an old bird by the way there's an old bird and a baboon hawk nest do old birds normally spawn on offense? Am I tripping? At least with this, it makes the- with this mod, it makes the regular flashlight an infinite light. That's kind of- 50 stop sign? Jesus. That's pretty good. Big bolt. It is stormy outside, so... The fact that three out of four of my items are conductive is kind of funny. Offense can spawn it naturally. Okay, got it. Is that an apparatus room, too? I might be done on offense, honestly. It's a fake one. Engine. Oh. But no locker room. I forgot to forgot to summon Nico before opening that door, so I don't get rewarded here. More two-handed items. I don't want to get too many two-handed items. I also don't want to come too far into offense. Just in case uh, I get coil heads or something. My last run was ended because I got two coil heads and two slimes, and I got trapped. So I should actually start heading back. I noticed that some Iron Man runners, they actually just skip offense, especially in the non-solo runs. I was like, huh. Not once in my Iron Man career have I considered skipping offense, but it makes sense. Especially when you risk people dying on such an early moon. 
But I think it's because it's an early moon that I've never considered it. Like, at least for real. Because I feel like a lot of risks should be taken early rather than later. Because you can always reset early, but resetting late kind of sucks. What does the old bird do? Oh, you know what? <laughs> uh, I'm a little worried now. Because I know that he changed it. He even, he even nerfed the old bird for version 2. So, uh... I guess we'll find out, huh? But I might be able to leave before it even becomes an issue. You know what, we're gonna use this time to grab the other inventory just in case. Since I have stormy weather, I think this is a good time to juggle more than one inventory anyway. I'm also keeping all of the metallic objects in one inventory, so that way I don't have to think about which ones I have to drop. I just drop them. But if- oh, okay, well. See, then I can go grab these while my stamina comes up. I might consider leaving the tattered metal sheet, actually. That way I don't have to deal with stormy weather or conductive scrap for the rest of the run. That's only worth 11 anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. Okay, we're gonna drop this one. Let's not fall. Oh, I didn't jump, whatever. Weird instance where I missed the jump timing, but it looks like we will be getting out of here before the old bird becomes an issue, though. We drop directly next to the metal part of the pipe, not take fall damage. Yeah, out. I, I was trying to jump onto the ship, because if you land on the railing, you also don't take damage. And then I, I skip a jump that I have to do to get on the ship with a two-handed item. March is stormy. It's good that I left that tattered metal sheet. That means I can probably run a bit faster here. So I shouldn't have to worry about conductive scrap for, for the rest of this run, because I left the tattered metal sheet out on the previous moon. So I sacrificed 16 scrap so that I can run the rest of this moon kind of, uh, I guess, a bit with less stress. I can still get RNG lightning, but I mean, RNG lightning is going to happen regardless. But at least I'm not going to be slowed down as a result of ooh, a different reason, you know? This is pretty good so far. Gift box, laser pointer. My strategy for solo march is to, one, scan for beehives because beehives will be the safest. Um, will be the safest way to get loot on this moon. And then if there aren't any beehives, then I'll just go, I'll quickly check all of the entrances. But not, I won't, I won't go too far into any of them because I don't really have to do that. Yo, Pat though, five tier one subs, appreciate you. That's crazy actually. <laughs> They're going crazy with the subs today. Really don't- okay. We're gonna- we're gonna do one RNG for- okay. One RNG throw for the five subs. We're actually getting some decent loot here. I might- you know what? No, we're- we're gonna live a little dangerously. Just gonna throw that. It's a little faster to risk it. Is this main entrance? What the? Okay. So I can grab this easter egg again. We're just gonna casually use this shortcut. Um... If only I brought that key, we would have been able to do this also, but it's okay. We're gonna pick up this egg. This might be where I sacrifice the flashlight, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it. Because how much am I leaving there? Oh, that's kind of a lot. Jesus, guys. Five, t five gifted from spin as well? I'm pretty sure this is the most subs I've ever gotten in this stream. You guys are nuts. Now I have to win, right? I have to win. I have to put on, I have to put on a, sh a show. But yeah, you guys are crazy. <laughs> so in turn, I hope to put on a crazy show. I think, I mean, this is already pretty nuts. I think, in hindsight, I think I should have invested in a stun grenade specifically for this. Where was that? Sorry, guys. The tulip snakes don't live on my runs. Although. He might live if he can't hit me. <laughs> I was kind of curious to see if I can hit him out of the air like that. I guess the answer is yes. I did play baseball for most of my life. Okay, there is a spike trap there and another fire exit. So I, I think that's one less fire exit that I have to check now. 
I actually don't have to check the far one be because of this. I will check slightly this way though, see if I can get a full inventory of loot. Okay, well that's interesting. No, something spawning in. Don't know what it is. Probably a snare flea if I had to guess. That's either lucky or unlucky that both of those fire exits are there. It saves me some time, but it also means I have less opportunity to look for loot, but maybe it'll actually save me from taking that risk. It is past 3 p.m. on March. What should I do if my game doesn't auto save while I'm in orbit? Um, uh, Uninstall and reinstall probably. Or just complete your run in one sitting and never rely on a save file ever. Okay. So I learned that running after them kind of aggros them. Jeez, that sent chills uh, like through my whole body actually. Just the mere presence of a baboon hawk. The timer stopped? Uh... Wait, I think it's still running, it's just in the background. Hold on. I think I have to have it open. Oh, but... I'm not going back for those bottles. Let's see, uh, what comes after March? Adamants? Flooded adamants? <laughs> I'd rather it be Eclipse. Flooded adamants just actually exposes a lot of my weaknesses. There's vein shrouds also. This is actually horrible. You guys want to see how quickly I can skip adamants? I don't even care, bros. We're, <laughs> We're not... <laughs> that, that's how you beat adamant solo, you just don't do it. Any other weather I would have gone. I would have even gone during an eclipse. So, shout out to the people who believed in me. Now we get to open up the gambling again. Will Austin survive quota three? I would have been more down if not for the kidnapper fox. Can you guys imagine a kidnapper fox on a flooded moon? Just think about that for like a second. I'm just I'm just drowning. <laughs> We're on world record pace, by the way, for the lethal amp up Iron Man speedrun solo category. Why is it world record pace? It's just world record pace by default because no one's ever done this run. The key to making to getting a world record is just to come up with your own categories. And it doesn't matter if it goes on speedrun.com or not, just put it up on YouTube and say it's a world record. So I don't know if you guys noticed this about when I manage loot on this phase or just in general, but whenever I have to manage like a lot of two-handed and single-handed items, I try to drop them separate from each other. So that way I can pick up all the single-handed items without having to manage, like pick up and drop two-handed items in the process. It might be time to start buying resources. I'm gonna see how much money I have after this. 420. I did that on purpose. Just like how I do my inventory management. And so many 420s on Chef's channel, it's not gonna be the last one either. Definitely gonna buy a stun grenade. Gonna buy a jetpack as well. Kidding, are you kidding me? Um, not gonna spend 900 this late in the run. I think I will buy a shovel though. I should have done that a lot earlier actually, we're kind of losing time. Stun grenade for giants, shovel for kidnapper foxes. Notice how most of the equipment I buy is meant to deal with the outdoor enemies. Actually, I guess I could, um... Having the shovel can be good for nutcrackers on Rend also. What do I think about the Kidnapper Fox? Kidnapper Fox, I think, is a good addition to the game. Makes challenge runs a lot harder though, and especially solo play. But luckily, Kathwin's the only one that experiences uh, Kidnapper Foxes in solo runs in the community. She kind of just takes one for the whole team in that regard. And I just never get them on my solo runs. Instead, I get uh, Eclipse Rend. There is a dog. So that means there's only one giant at most. So that's good. Power level 6. Max power level 6. Uh, dog takes up 2 power level. Giant takes up 3. There's math. Let's see what happens. Oh, well there's a nutcracker early. I kind of regret not bringing the shovel now. Especially, I'm pretty sure Jay changed the Nutcracker AI. So I'm, a, I'm gonna have to be a little careful. I could just have my run ended right here, if I'm not. 
We're going downstairs. Oh god. I might have to- I'm, I'm gonna go get the shovel. Now the question is, does the Nutcracker cheese still work on this modded Nutcracker? Also, I'm kind of friggin' bold for coming out here without a stun grenade. I said no giant has spawned since the time I left. Looks like it's two dogs, so no giant. Is this how you guys do- is this how you do the jump tech, by the way? You just jump as soon as you can? And dogs don't hear you? I mean, it, I'm just gonna pretend like it worked. I can also just stun him. Just simply... He's spinning a lot faster than normal, that's for sure. But I don't know if he like shoots faster. It's also hard to see. He's right there. I'm just gonna go for it. That didn't work. No! <laughs> what the? Oh, okay. I don't <laughs> I think um what the lethal amp up mod did was it made the nutcracker walk directly into me. <laughs> oh, that sucks. All right. So, we're going to um we're going to pay out the debtors <laughs> immediately. No. Austin did not survive quota 3. But only on the first try will Austin complete the comeback on Q3. It's gonna be a fast vote guys, so get ready to vote. So normally, in the Iron Man run, a death means that you reset, right? But I, ha I had a thought, I was watching Spikeaholic speedrun the Iron Man challenge the other day. Shout out Spikeaholic, founder of the Golden Man challenge. And he asked me if the Iron Man challenge ends, the solo version ends when you die. And I said yes. And the main reason was because, not because of principle, but because it's pretty, it's basically impossible like for you to recover from this. Not because I can't make 365 in two days, but because of the amount of money that I lost as a result of dying there. And I thought about it, and I'm like, wouldn't it just be freaking badass if you died this late into an Iron Man run and still completed it? So I think we're gonna, we're gonna give that a shot today. I mean, it's a good opportunity to. And it is Eclipsed again, so we're not doing it for free. I guess if you let that influence your vote, then uh, you're definitely good at voting, I guess. Yeah, let's go. We're going to rend Eclipse round two. And this time I don't have a shovel or anything. I guess I should buy one. Actually, I'm gonna sh Okay. And so, um, that means that there's no double giants, at least. Oh, there's- there is a giant, though. There's a giant on my left. That's why I'm going light path. It's the only time you'll ever see me go light path, is if there's a giant on the other side. That kind of sucks, though. But those are also going to be the only enemies I find on Rend. One dog, one giant. The orange sign and smo, if you will, of lethal company outdoor enemies. Shoutouts to Ornstein and Smo. Anorlando. Someone made an Anorlando uh, Lethal Company <laughs> moon. Um, I haven't played on it yet, but that was real funny to me. I found it right as I was kind of getting over doing modded Lethal Company. But I will go back to Anorlando at some point. <laughs> Don't let me down on all my money. Oh man. Must be new here. I somehow get everyone to put their money on the wrong... Uh, on the wrong thing. Whether or not I do it on purpose is up to interpretation and also up to uh, personal biases depending on the results of your bet. I got I got to do this for the long time believers. But now that I started doing channel point bettings, I'm starting to build up a a following of non-believers, long time non-believers. Wait, why are you haunting me already? Okay. Well, that's cool. So it's immediate immediate haunts. 
Just for how long, though? Okay. That's gonna be kind of crazy to deal with. Uh-oh. Uh, this is not good. But I can't stop yet. Because I have nothing. I didn't know you can jump over the ghost girl like that, by the way. I just didn't really have another choice. So I just went for it. Being able to run that painting back and the teeth is going to be a little tough, I think. I think I have to go fire exit. I'm praying that the giant didn't move onto this side. As long as I make it past the cabin, I'm good, I think. I also have to keep stamina in case the ghost girl decides to haunt. No, giant's on the left. Alright, fuck it. I don't really have a choice. I'm gonna have to do better on the next round, I think. You have a 50% chance to trip the breaker? Okay, that would have been awful. Okay. So we're starting off in the dark. Fantastic. We just have to make enough to meet quota. I don't know how much that is, but I mean, we're also trying- Oh, we have enough to go- Wait a minute. Guys, I went to Rend like three times. This isn't even the Iron Man challenge anymore. What is this? I was supposed to go to Dine. It's gonna be a hybrid between the regular Iron Man and the hardcore Iron Man, I guess. <laughs> no, no, everyone was just gonna let me get away with that. <laughs> uh... I, I, thanks, I guess. Where people who believed in me making it past this quota, uh, it just got a lot more a lot more doable now. I guess this is kind of just a fun pivot while we uh, figure out what to do in the meantime while we, Nico finishes his work. I definitely forgot the point of the run after I died. This is the first time I've ever decided to continue a run after failing the Iron Man, so this is a new experience for all of us. The Iron Man into a hardcore Iron Man pivot when you lose. Cash register? Okay, well, I think it's allowed now. If you find a cash register, like, all the rules go out the window. It's kind of like the same thing as when you get money in real life. You can kind of just pay to um, bypass certain rules that people who can't afford to have to abide by. Shout out to traffic laws. Lethal Company has always been pay to win. We just, um, people just don't like talking about that part. It's pay to play and pay to win. You gotta pay $10 in order to for, to play the game, and then you gotta pay actual money to um, perform well. What? I'm so confused how this led back to the main entrance. That's not the path that I had in mind, but whatever. We're just gonna take this. I do have enough for quota. <laughs> so I think, we're gonna, I think we're gonna move on. The whole point of this run anyway is to showcase the lethal amp up mod, not so much to um, complete the Iron Man challenge. The Iron Man challenge is just the framing, or at least that's how it started off. But since lethal amp up is mostly dealing with the higher tier moons, we might as well play a bit more on the higher tier moons, right? Go Embryon next. Uh, I'll go to Embryon closer to six o'clock, because if I end, if, if the run ends because I go to Embryon now. And then I'll have to find a way to kill some time before Nico's fully readily available. Imagine this with Nico's mod. I almost, I almost put on the Lethal Company randomizer mod for this run also, but because it's my first time using the mod, I wanted to see 
how it would affect the game with just like just by itself first i also plan on using the randomizer mod in the random size run that i'm gonna do with nico after this so don't worry we'll be getting we'll be getting some randomized stuff uh, at some point today and then we're gonna we're gonna go to dine will austin survive a quota on dine we're we're just doing one quota per moon now at least until it stops making sense now I know that he, for a fact, that he adjusted the butler AI. So we're, we're gonna see exactly how, most likely, on Dine. Majority of Dine's favorites are different. Good to know, good to know. I don't know how that'll affect LeBron's legacy, but we're gonna find out. Um, we're gonna get the regular flashlight, we're gonna get the shovel, I guess. Yo, Nico, thanks for the sub. Tier 1 subs. Robot toys. These don't spawn on experimentation, by the way. As you can see, I have an infinite flashlight in this regular flashlight, so long as I continue to shake it. I don't think the pro flashlight works this way, so it's kind of like a, a trade-off that you buy into. I do think this makes the regular flashlight at least a bit more interesting. It's also kind of fun to spam a different button other than right-click when you're inside the facility. Because a lot of people just spam right-click, which makes sense. You're going to be scanning at all times. In this, this one, you can just spam both clicks at the same time. The spam left click and right click. <laughs> no other game makes you do that. Spam both key, uh, mouse buttons. There's gotta be a lamp right here. Thank you. Uh oh. I'm a little worried. I dropped my shovel. Hello. Bro. Not cool. Wait, this isn't where I came from. Damn it. Where's the shovel? No! I'm gonna die. I passed it? I ran I ran over it? Oh well, it's okay. The fire exit's right there. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I definitely don't need it. Well, so what does the butler do in Lethal Amp Up? I guess we'll never know. I do want to go get my shovel at least, so it's not like I'm going to like, not go back in. I just got a little scared, because, uh, and when you get scared, you kind of lose track of everything. Oh, okay. The flashlight bugged out on me. Unfortunate. Oh, there's a thumper also. Said to the big room. This one, right? I'm still gonna pick up the flashlight even though it's not working. Maybe if I charge it, it'll start working better. I think if the spore lizard were more dangerous too, that would be kind of interesting. Okay, so char uh, charging the flashlight makes it work again. Spore lizard with baboon hawk AI, with baboon hawk sound effects too, just bring my worst enemy inside. You've made Butler immortal? Why would you do that? <laughs> Bees have less speed so you can outrun them. So, you can actually out outrun bees still. The reason why people get caught... What the f... Are you serious? You guys see that? <laughs> Alright, we're playing main. Dine trying to end my run. That, <laughs> that turret was literally in the fire exit. Is that part of the mod also? What? Why? Okay, there's a turret there. Wait, why are there... No, wait, this is Dine. I'm like, why are there turrets on rend? Because this isn't rend, my brother. I'm a little scared though to go down these dark hallways. The whole point of having a flashlight is so you can see down the dark hallways and not get shot up by a turret, but this regular flashlight kind of blows. We're gonna try to go for like at least one more item here. Not like I re even really need it, but maybe we won't then. <laughs> maybe we'll just take this stuff. Butler bees? Yeah, you could- 
You can act. Yeah, you um, you can outrun Butler bees in normal. Also, I was watching a uh, Tipper Cod just do some crazy maneuver, like a uh, Butler Hornet uh, maneuvers, and it was some inspiring stuff. Shoutouts to the speedrunning community, honestly, because no one just be no one else be casually dealing with Butlers like that, you know. At least in solo, except probably like Thelonious, honestly. <laughs> I'm gonna try the Iron Man challenge with my friend for the first time. Any tips? Uh, have fun with it. <laughs> Don't die. That's like the best advice I could that could be given also. But I think that's just general lethal company advice also. Play for life. Play for life unless you actually cannot, yeah. Sometimes you do have to play for scrap value. Which is what the company wants. But it's not how you become a long-term employee. Also, this is free. I already have quota. But we're gonna try to afford to go to Artifice, naturally. And I still have to pay for Titan anyway. You die if a worm falls on you? Yes, you do. <laughs> that happens in vanilla also. It's very rare that that'll happen. Because for that to happen in vanilla, you need to have at least two people. And one has to trigger the worm on one side, and one just has to get absolutely destroyed on the other end of that. So it's not very likely. But th this mod makes it likely for you to just get randomed by a worm. I don't really want to play this the clips, but whatever. We gotta we can't we gotta keep the believers on their toes and the non-believer. We gotta give the non-believers hope. I could have just left and completed the quota, but that's no fun for the non-believers, especially considering how chill I I was able to meet the quota. Near activity detected. Do I go in? Absolutely. Let's see. We're leaving. <laughs> that's not what I want to see immediately. Um. Not like that, because I have to figure out my positioning. I could go get the shovel and try to kill it. If it was a blob, I was, I was ready. I was ready for the blob smoke. Despite what my past 40 or so hours of the game would say. I died a, I died of blobs quite a bit. I did see someone in the comments on my most recent video say that they also have like 300 hours in the game and that they died of blo blobs also. Or that they just don't like blobs. So I feel kind of validated. Homemade flashbang, love to see that. I'm hearing an easter egg, so maybe there's a... Maybe there's a hoarding bug somewhere. I'm gonna carry this, just in case, because I don't have a shovel. So I'm gonna have some sort of, uh, insurance. On the wedding ring... I'll just pick that up, actually. For we're gonna do the day one lethal company thing and use the loot, carry our loot with us. So that way, it's like emo emotional support loot. I said it in one of my early videos, but I proposed the theory that the reason why like newer players like carrying the loot with them everywhere is, okay, well I'm getting haunted now. The reason why newer players like carrying the loot with them isn't be because, uh, well, one of them is because they feel better. They feel safer holding on to the scrap. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, I'm going to drop that uh, line of thought because I obviously don't have it fully thought out. And I also have to refocus and figure out this dog situation. Dog in lethal amp up isn't really an issue unless there's hawks or other sound inducing entities. Heard that. Believe in play for life when it's time to play for life. Also, okay, hold on. There's a giant. Yeah, if you want to get better in the long term, uh, just go as deep as possible as you can every time. Let's make sure I don't die here. Can she go through the wall? I'm ready. I mean, this isn't going to do anything to her, but... That's actually the reason why... One of the reasons why Larry came up, or Shirt came up with the 16-hour challenge. Because a lot of our challenges or a lot of challenges in Lethal Company involve just going into the facility, grabbing loot, and leaving. So he wanted to see what it would be like if we were just forced to stay and like, fight our way to survival. And you know, being able to do both is actually like the best answer, and being able to discern when you should fight and go and stay 
versus when you should leave is a very good skill to develop. We're going to pay out the believers again. <laughs> yes, Austin will complete this. And we're going to do the same thing for Titan. Will Austin survive a quota on Titan? This is probably like the freest Kenny coin I've ever offered on the channel so far. Especially in this format. Like one quota per moon is pretty not bad. Tried the Nutcracker jumping cheese today. Doesn't always work. Yeah, it seems like there's... I, I don't know the exact specifics behind it, but I do remember when I was listening to the speedrunning a commentary that they they sometimes questioned whether or not it actually worked in certain... So there, there's got to be... There's something that I'm not noticing about... about that strategy. Or something that I'm not aware of that makes it a bit more consistent. I'm a shit person because I'm a coward, but I do keep the run alive and tell what an entity is by the red dot. I actually appreciated having a shit person in my early Lethal Company stuff. I remember playing for the first time with a terminal operator, and whenever I would come across something dangerous, or a door that I couldn't get past, it would just open. I was like, huh, I'm not used to that, but it's kind of nice. I won't grab this yet, because I don't want to spawn in a bunch of stuff on Titan. And it's right next to the entrance anyway, so... You know, I can't even identify all the red dots, to be honest. I was never a ship person. Mostly because, uh, even from the start, I was always, like, streaming Lethal Company. Even if it wasn't necessarily for, like, money or trying to turn it into a career, I felt like I wouldn't get a lot of clips just from looking at the terminal. Shout out to everyone who plays terminal in their group. Can confirm spin has saved many runs. Shout outs. Everyone gets to contribute in their own way, right? And as long as everyone's happy with it, that's what matters. Oh. Okay, hopefully, I see a bra our first Bracken of the run, by the way. Don't know how he's changed him. But we're gonna bring this stuff outside at least. Probably check fire exit now. It's quite a bit of loot, actually. Granted, this version of the heart, like, of, of the run that I'm doing right now is way easier. Oh. Well. No! No, 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 no. Okay, we're good. I'm still gonna check fire exit though. I got time. There's a vein shroud on the staircase, by the way. I don't know if you guys saw that. I think this is good enough. Make sure I have enough stamina to survive a haunting out here. I don't necessarily like being haunted out here because my visibility is not the greatest. Save the shovel at least, so at least if I die here I'll have a shovel for future titan runs. Yeah. Wait, run, motherfucker! Okay. Luckily, I noticed my sound change. I, I was running into stuff though, that wasn't good. Using my own footsteps, by the way, to monitor the sound, because otherwise... It can be kind of hard to hear some of the sound changes. Hmm. Should be good. Just gotta leave now. And saw my coin flash before my eyes. <laughs> it's okay, we we saved it. This is a mansion on Titan, by the way. Titan mansion is a 69 and 369 chance. That's gotta be intentional. 34 whoopee cushion is crazy. Don't ask me why I'm carrying the whoopee cushion with me. I'm not gonna have a good answer for you. Oh god. No! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I don't even get to fight the Nutcracker. I closed the door myself, dude. <laughs> Had the reaction time of... What's an example of someone that doesn't have good reaction times? But here's the thing. The quota's not over yet. I just have to make $750 in one day. It's okay if you went all in, it's not over. It's not over. It's over if I don't make 750 here. That was scuffed from the beginning because it was a mansion interior anyway. But now we will try. Today I will full- I'm going to full clear Titan solo with only one day left in my quota. And all I have is a key. 
I've been watching my Mr. Beast videos. Let me uh, just lean into that Mr. Beast inflection and at some point I'll get Mis Mr. Beast numbers. Alright. Oh, easy. Why is this door open? That's not good. Wh who opened this? And why did I- why did I not see what opened it? No way it shot downward, are you guys serious? I- I thought I was good downstairs. <laughs> um, alright, I think I have to pay out the non-believers <laughs> this time. If anyone has ever doubted why a pro flashlight is valuable on this kind of run, I hope that these last two moons- Actually, last one wasn't a pro flashlight thing, I- I immediately saw the turret. But that one, that one could have been avoided. <laughs> we do still have some time before Nico joins, so we are gonna go do a uh, do an embryon only quota also because I think I, I would definitely want to see more of the old bird. So I'm gonna do a new prediction now. Start prediction. Will Austin survive a quota on embryon? So first first day. Normally I run around the side, but we're just gonna run send it down the middle and see what happens. We're gonna see what hap like what the old birds do differently. We're gonna play main, even though it's probably not the best idea. Honestly, Embryon Eclipse is kind of free, so I don't know why people are so worried about it. Okay. Easy clap, I don't know why people have trouble with this. Okay, I, I might have a little trouble with this. Not gonna lie. Uh, so, about Embryon being kind of free, I've kind of changed my mind. <laughs> We're gonna go Fire Exit, I think. And hope that it's a bit more doable. Excuse me. <laughs> so, if you guys... I don't think he's changed anything about the old bird, it's kind of just regular old bird activity. Whoa, he's so fast! Okay. Now as long as the coil head doesn't show up right now, we should be okay. That was just normal old bird activity, to be honest. Hello. Why is he just standing there? Hopefully this plastic fish wasn't part of his stash. I'm a little worried though, because there's literally just a coil head spawning somewhere, running around. Alright, well, we have to grab this, it's Embryon. I'm making it back. I'm pretty confident. Nope, less confident. Where's that coil head, though? Jesus! Okay. We're gonna go the smart route this time. This is how you're supposed to survive. Embryon Eclipse, you go off to the edge, but I think if they're all flying, and especially if they're just gonna land next to you, I don't think it matters all too much. I actually might want to go closer to the middle. I like playing this little canyon right here because it gives you a lot of protection from the old birds. Unless they land directly on top of you. Kind of want to save some stamina also. Don't grab me, please. Okay. I might die. Okay, this game's easy. Just simply survive. <laughs> I don't have enough to meet quota yet, but we get to see, live to see another day. Just simply be better. <laughs> I don't know why everyone complains about Embryon. <laughs> just, yeah, just don't die. Like that, that advice of just simply not dying is so strong actually.
Foggy Embryon, love to see it. Only gotta survive two more days. I'm gonna play all of them, by the way. We're not gonna get this 130 quota for free. If not for this scan for the main entrance, I'd probably be lost on Foggy Moons. It would be funny if uh, Foggy Moons disabled your scan. I'm just giving Jay all the ideas to make everyone's lives miserable on this moon or on this mod. Oh, a loot room. I might actually get a full inventory of loot here, guys. That's crazy. I got a full inventory of loot on Embryon. I haven't secured a full inventory of loot on Embryon though. Picking up an inventory of loot is different than securing one. So let's go secure it. I literally- I really just dropped that easter egg. It's not that I had faith in it not exploding, it's just that I wasn't thinking. But yeah, this seems to be like a, a decently timed activity because I should be able to just pivot into the different size enemy run with Nico almost right after this. 167. We're, we are out here farming Embryon. And we got every- we got every weather actually. Eclipsed, Foggy, and Mild. Mild is going to be the one that gives me the most problem because it's going to be the one where I'm the most confident. I'm also uh, transferring my momentum right now. I'm pre preserving my momentum so I can make an insane run from this ship. Look at how fast I am. Shout out mild weather. Now tell me how much farther I got based of uh, preserving my momentum and starting at max sprint versus not. Okay, well. This is like the, probably the most exciting way I could end this run. So, why did he do that? Because if I'm not gonna do it, then who will? I'm literally carrying an apparatus and a tattered metal sheet and a big bolt. And I almost didn't make that jump. This is a non-believer saving grace. For real. I'm gonna go for a full inventory, might as well. The key to victory, I think I'm gonna skip it. What's the heaviest? Okay, well, I'm gonna look for a way to to beat this. I'm not even gonna get the best inventory. This is the best inventory thematically speaking, but not by scrap value. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, guys. Believe in the me that doesn't believe that this is possible. Game's free. Okay, okay, well, uh, there- there was a world- there was a world where I actually- <laughs> where I actually survived that. It's not this one. But there was a world. It's gonna be in an alternate universe. This is what happens when you tune in long enough. You either die a believer or you live long enough to become a non-believer or something like that.